up guys, it's Neonate with another Settlers of Catan gameplay. I'm making these videos to help you be a better Catan player and beat all your friends at home. So let's uh, take a look at the uh, board. Uh, I'm in the fourth position. Uh, orange is first. The, the things I look at first are generally where the best intersections in terms of number of pips and where the ores. What's interesting about this board is the ores are uh, relatively low producers, the 2, 3, and the 11. So this is going to be an interesting game. I always like these games. you got to do a little bit more uh, thinking. So in terms of the high probability spots, that 3, 6, 9 was worth 11 points. Orange takes the 3, 4, 8, which is a good spot, 10 points. 5, 9, 10 is a good spot. 5, 6, 11, 4, 8, 10. Those are uh, you know, the highest producing spots. Um, you know, so as the fourth player, I'll get to choose two settlements. I'm going to try to get all five resources. I think one thing that other folks might not be paying attention to is that 4611. Uh, that's got a lot of brick. Uh, in terms of wheat, you know, this five wheat in the corner makes it, people are going to have a tough time getting wheat. This is the only other good wheat is the 910. Red goes ahead and uh, gets the 269, which is worth 11 points, gives him you know good um, a good mix of wood and brick to make roads and then a tiny bit of ore so that's worth um, sorry 10 points not 11 let's see where white will go white takes the 349 so that's interesting too. That's worth seven points, and she's going to be competing with red right off the bat. So that uh, leaves me with a decision to make. Generally, as the fourth player, you usually take whatever the best producing spot that's left, and then you make the best of it from there. So the best producing spots from there are 4, 8, 10, which is worth 5, 3, 3. That's worth uh, 11 points. Uh, that would be a good mix with this 4, 6, 11, which is worth uh, 5, three two that's worth 10 points that would give me all the resources gives me a little bit of ore and as a bonus you know it's gonna it's got two good producing uh, bricks and i can go towards the brick port so i think that's a pretty solid play um and another good thing is whenever a four rolls i'll get a road so it's good to get the wood and the brick in the same roll because it, you know one doesn't help you without the other um, and then once I get to that brick port, I'll be able to convert those bricks to whatever I need, let's say ore, to upgrade. So I think that is a strong play. Uh, in terms of which one to place first, I would probably place the, the brick one, the 4611 first, uh, because it's harder for me to generate wood. And then uh, place the 4810 second, definitely head towards that brick port. Uh, so I've, now I've got a wood in my hand, and when a four or six rolls, I'll be able to build a, a road. White takes the five, six, twelve, so that gives her all the resources, very low wheat. Uh, that spot was worth 10 points, so she's at, the, her, her first settlement was worth uh, 9, so she's at 19 points. She'll want to get to that wood port, that 912 wood port, also to probably more importantly to get more wheat. Okay, uh, red takes the 5910, which is worth 11 points. 11 plus her his original 10 points, so he's at 21 points with very low ore. Orange is forced to take the 510 to get wheat, uh, but she does have all resources. That is worth 4, 3. That's 7 plus her original 10 is worth 17. So orange at 17 points. Red at 21 points. White at 19, and I'm at uh, 21 points as well. I think in terms of who's going for what, since everyone has low ore, it's it's a little bit hard to say. I mean, Orange definitely can go for long road. She can connect her two settlements, and she's got wood and brick. Red has wood and brick. It can be a little bit harder for him to connect his roads. Uh, white has wood and brick, and she can definitely connect her settlements. So 
three of them have a possibility of going for a long road. I do as well, um, because I have wood and brick. I think my my ore and wheat and sheep are probably a little bit better than my opponents, so I'm going to be thinking about taking army. It's generally a good idea, you know, if everyone's going to be going for a long road, or, you know, if you have the competitive advantage to go largest army, that's probably the direction you should go. You know, it's sort of the path of least resistance. If ever, if, you know, three players are building and fighting for roads, you just don't want to go that way. <laughs> you know, even if you have just a slightly better ore and slightly better wheat and sheep, you may want to think about going for army instead. So white rolls a nine. She's looking for brick, which I don't have. that trade but she's wanting she's wanting a sheep I'll definitely give her a sheep okay, she trades it to orange she's probably gonna cut off red right here so she cuts off red She's going to be wood girl, and when she gets to that wood port, then she could be a danger. Okay, so I got my brick. I think first things first. I'm going to go towards that brick port. Once I get that brick port, everything else is going to get easier. Another four rolls. Orange heads towards the 810, which would be eight points. And it's the ore port, which isn't that important since there aren't many ores. Red rolls a nine, giving him brick and wheat. He trades those bricks in for a wood. Didn't even ask for a trade. White rolls a, a three, giving ore to orange and wood for her. She's looking for a sheep. to give up brick. Sure, I'll take that. I can... That almost makes me think I can try for that 3611 spot. Which will just give me even more ore production, but also get me another way to get ore, which is super important for a four-player game. So White is able to build. She get, goes out into the lead. I kind of like someone else taking the lead initially, getting some of the heat off of me. So the question is, what should I do? Should I go to the 3611 or just build right now on the port? Yeah, I think I'm going to take a pause and I'm going to try to go for that 3611 just before anybody gets any ideas. Um, you know, I think white's probably going to Build at the 912. Red's probably going to go for the 4511. Kind of want to stake a claim on 3611 before tying white at three points. And I just think I'll, if I roll a four, I'll be able to build at that 3611. So that's those are sort of my thoughts. Normally I would just build at the port, but since I like. I like that nobody's close by, there's a little chance that I'll get totally stuffed. Oh my gosh, a bunch of 11s roll. I, I guess I'll have to upgrade. Should I upgrade the brick? Probably the brick. Just to, uh, in anticipation of eventually getting that brick port. Five rolls. Orange are looking for sheep willing to give wheat well, she'll give two wheats 
shoot. I guess I'll take that deal. I should be getting plenty of sheep. She buys a de development card. Orange is also at three points, by the way. Six rolls. Giving wood to red and white. Giving me two bricks. Oh, white also gets a brick. So she gets a road every time a six rolls. So she's definitely a long road threat. Wow, red trading all those sheep for a brick. I would have traded him. Two for one. <laughs> Another six, giving her another road. So she's got two roads in her hand. Level five. Okay, I really need a wood or a sheep. Um, let's see if anybody will. Let's see if red will just take the brick for the wood. Okay, white is willing to give me part of what I need. So I'll take that. Ooh, and red's willing to give me the other thing that I need. Perfect. Trading good. So now, yeah, I'm going to build on the court. Just because once I have that port, it's going to be a lot easier to build at the 3611. Vice versa, if I built at the 3611, it might take me a while to get to that, to, to be able to build the port. And I don't see a threat from the other players competing for that spot. Orange looking for a brick. Willing to give wheat, I think. She might be racing for the 2-5, which will be competing with red. So you kind of like it when other players are competing with each other for spots. Kind of lets you, they focus on each other, get, get a little bit of tunnel vision. So red takes that wheat port, which will be good for him. So I think he could be a uh, army competitor um, if he turns those wheats to ores. Uh, whoa. White rolls a seven, hurts herself, puts it on the four, takes from me. Now I'm at four points, so I'm in the lead now. Now I've got this brick port. It's I'm. I'm a big threat. I roll a six, giving me a ton of brick. Let's see if anybody will trade for wood. Okay, white wants a brick for a wheat. I'll do that. Anybody? No, I think I'll just trade two for one. Build at the three six eleven, giving me five points, and uh, you know another way to get more. So I think I'm taking a pretty commanding lead, and I'm basically. You know, no matter where you put the robber on me, I have another way to produce. I guess probably my 10, that the weed is probably the weakest spot. But I can turn bricks into wheat if needed. So orange stole from me. Looks like red is going to steal from me. So it's going to be a three on one. I don't blame them at all. Red makes a move towards the 4, 5, 11. That makes sense. And that basically stuffs any ideas I had about connecting my two settlements. But that's okay. I think I'm really going to go for army. And if I did extend my road, I'd be going up north. Okay, so white rolls another 7. There goes all my cards. That's okay. Okay, she, she builds her fourth settlement. It's also the wood port, so that's a little bit dangerous. I roll an eight, giving me two sheeps, giving orange two woods, 
six is bold, giving me a bunch of three bricks, giving red and white wood. Twelve wool, wow, giving two wheat to white. White rolls a nine. Wheats and brick to white and red. So now white is looking for wood to go with her bricks. Wow, she's willing to give two cards for a wood. Too bad I don't have one. I guess orange is going to take that trade. That's what I was afraid of. White is going to block red away. And uh, basically now she's pretty much going to be able to connect. So white's at five points. She's built five settlements. She's got long roads. So she's gonna basically at seven. And she's easily able to get long roads. So she's basically at seven. And she just pissed off red. So. I think that actually helps me. And maybe red will go after white a little bit, even if we're tied. Or even. So I'm going to start buying knights along my thinking of basically buying development cards, about, you know, and getting largest army. You know, so white is pretty much got longest road, and and maybe orange can compete for it and they can kind of battle each other for long road, I'm basically going largest army. Wow, orange willing to give an ore, rare ore for a, for a sheep, I'll do that. So she builds on the 3-1 port. She's at four points with a hidden card. Red is probably bombed. Now he's got like nowhere to go. He's kind of boxed it in. I guess he's going to go for that sheep port. You know, if I were red, I wouldn't even bother going for the sheep port. I'd just try to upgrade my spots and buy development cards. Okay, so he builds a road that direction. White roll a nine. Then the wheat is blocked, but she and red get wreck. Wow, another 11. 11s have been coming up in my favor. I need a wheat. Let's see if anybody will trade a wheat for a brick. Maybe orange? Just going to try to buy development cards. See if anybody would trade for an ore. Red is saying more. Fine. Since he's in last place. Okay, so he'll take that. Since he's in last place, I don't mind giving him a good trade. Okay, I get a mono. Hmm. This guy would kind of prefer getting a, another knight at this point, but can't argue with a mono, the best development card in the game. Ten rolls, good, giving me wheat. builds towards that sheep port. Like I said, if I were him, I would just trade those woods and bricks for ores and wheats and just try to upgrade. That's the best thing to do when you're in last place. You know, even if you get to that sheep port, it just doesn't do you, it doesn't move the needle, you know? But if you upgraded the 269 to a city, you know, that makes a difference. Okay, so white takes long road. That's okay. That's expected. I'm glad the focus will be on her. 12 is rolled. So she needs a city, but she has no access to ore, so she'll be converting those woods to ore. Let's see if anybody will give me a wood for a brick. Okay, orange does. Make my way. Make my 
my own. Yeah, first I'll buy a development card, then I'll make my way up to the three one. In general, it's a good idea to, if you're gonna if you know you're gonna do both on the same turn, buy a development card and build a road. You should buy a development card first, just in case you get long, you know, you get the road building. Then that way you can save your wooden brick. So in that case, I got another knight, which is good. And since I didn't get road building, I, I went ahead and built that road. And definitely Orange has a shot at connecting her roads and competing for long road. Eight rolls. Red looking for a wood. I don't have that. So I've got two knights now in a monopoly. You know pretty strong position. Nobody else has a knight showing. So eventually I'm, I'm going to start moving the knight. You know, if it's next to me at all, the robber, I'll be moving him. Okay, so white changes cards in for an ore. So she's got one ore. She just used it for a development card. Okay, interesting. So she's in a tough position. She can't build any more settlements. She needs to upgrade to cities. And I can basically count how many ores she has and wheats um, and try to steal from her or maybe even mono when she gets three ores um, and really just cripple her. So you, you know, if possible, you want to upgrade to a city before you reach the maximum of five because if folks are paying attention and strong players, they, they're going to know you need to upgrade. They're going to make bad trades uh, with you if you know for you to get ore, or they're not going to trade with you at all. So it's going to be a tough time. Looks like 11s have come up a fair amount, and I've been the beneficiary of that in terms of a lot more ores than I would have expected. But now I've got nine cards. So Orange making a play, oh, connects her roads for a nine road, um, nine roads in her long road. She's at six points, reducing white to five. I kind of don't like that. I like white being in the lead and being the main target. Um, Six rolls, 12 cards. Okay, so white plays her knight. Puts it on the four. Steals from me. Rolls a 10. Okay, so I'm definitely going to use a knight, and I'm probably going to place it back on the nine, knowing that. White needs to upgrade to a city, and she needs wheat and ore to do that. So, okay, she trades a bunch of sheep in for an ore. So she's got one. She bought a development card. Okay. I'm not sure. I mean, she really should be saving them. Okay, so she connects her roads. Still only at eight roads. Okay, so I have 12 cards. Definitely play the knight when you're seven or if you're above seven you shouldn't hesitate to use the knight. Steal from white. Roll a five. Gosh I have a lot of cards. Thirteen cards. So I need a wood. Let's see if anybody will trade me a wood or a wheat. Yeah I need more wheat as well. Okay so orange needs that brick. Okay, let me buy another development card. Oh, it's a victory point. I really like a knight, actually. Let's see if anybody else will trade. Trade me a wheat. So I'm at six points. Okay, so let me trade these in. No, no, no. 
Okay, so I got my third knight. So I've got largest army. So I'm basically at eight points. Is there anything else I should do? Should I convert these bricks? You know what? I'm just going to convert them. I still have a lot of cards. Orange rolls an eight. Giving her so she extends her roads to ten roads. She's still got that hidden card, which could be a point. So she could be at seven. She could be at eight, I think. So keep that in the back of mind. She gets three woods. I got two sheeps. I'm at ten cards. Okay, white plays another knight. So she's at two knights. I definitely can't let her take army. That would be a disaster. She steals from me. So I'm gonna have to play my knight. She rolls a nine. Okay, so she gets a wheat. Okay, so she trades her bricks for a that's another development card. Okay, so she could get army. But she's not saving up for an upgrade, so I've got to play the knight, giving me two knights. Put it back on that nine. Take from white. Oh my gosh, I'm at 11. That's incredible. Let's see if anybody will trade me a wheat. Definitely my Achilles heel is wheat. Okay, so I'll just trade in those. Oh my gosh, another victory point. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Yeah, I think I'm thinking about trading those sheep in for another for another um, wheat. Because if I can build there. And I show the knight, I basically won the game. If white doesn't have a knight. So let's see. If she plays the knight, then. Anyway, I think basically since wheat is my Achilles heel, it doesn't hurt to kind of trade stuff in for wheat when I have a bunch of other cards. Red plays a road building, which really doesn't do anything for him. Red is basically a non-factor at this point. He's at five points. He also needs to upgrade. So that's a challenge, right, in these low war games is upgrading. I'm the only one who was able to do it. I got lucky when a bunch of 11s came up. So you really have to rely on your ports to give you ores. And then, you know, you kind of have to be patient. You got to collect ores slowly over time in order to get three ores. White, okay, white uh, has one ore. And she didn't play her, her development card, okay, so she bought one. So that means one of them is not a, a knight, but she just bought one. So she extends to 10 roads, so she builds one more, she'll take it. I, oh my gosh, of course, roll a seven. That's okay. And I probably should have played my knight first, but it doesn't really matter. I'll throw away all these bricks because I've basically won the game. I can build and then play my third knight for largest army, giving me 10 points. I didn't even have to use my mono. So, won this one pretty handily. I think the takeaway point to the takeaway for this game is, you know, this was a low or board. Um, so, you know, you have to rely on ports more. And I think, again, it's about strategy, figuring out what the other players are going for. In this case, most of them are going for road and then going the other way. So I went for army and definitely just focusing on buying development cards. I got lucky with 11s coming up and getting two victory points and the mono that I didn't even use. So I hope you liked the video and uh, please like or subscribe for more. Thanks.